it's your girl Titi from the D. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Here, let me explain. Anchor has tools that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and much more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So what are you waiting for? Get yourself together. Start your own podcast today. I'll see you soon. Welcome to TT from the D podcast show wind down Wednesday. I'm your host TT from the D. I want to thank you first and foremost for logging on tonight. I'm very aware that there are several other podcast shows and platforms you could have tapped into tonight, but you decided to join me and I'm super excited about that opportunity that you've taken. Tonight's hot topic, ladies and gentlemen, is a part two to last night. Tap in Tuesday. If you missed the live stream for Tap in Tuesday, you could catch it over on my YouTube page or you could catch it on one of my social media outlets. Tonight, we're just going to kind of unpack a little bit more about Roe versus Wade, what's really going on. And I really have to put this disclaimer out there first and foremost before we kick off the show for tonight. Let me be clear I'm a woman, of course, by nature, by divine design. I'm for the people. I am always about what's right for men, women, boys, girls, and others. I don't go with with the flow of how people or politics navigate the ship of life. I'm my own woman, like every other human being. You're your own man. You're your own woman. Everybody has the right or should have the right to pick and choose what works for them, what doesn't work for them. What makes them happy? What doesn't make them happy? Tragedy and triumph. But we've arrived, we've gotten to, I ain't going to say we arrived, we've gotten to a place where there are people in the world that feel like they need to dictate our lives. Like we need dictatorship across the globe. Now, some things we do need some advice, but there are certain things we don't. When we talk about Roe versus Wade, let's go back. Roe versus Wade was a landmark legal decision issued back in January of 1973. Now, that was two years before I was born, which the U.S. Supreme Court struck it down, uh, which is this Texas statute banning abortion, effectively legalizing the procedure across the United States. I'm like, what? The court <laughs> held that a woman's right to abort or have an abortion was implicit in the right to privacy protected by the 14th amendment to the constitution. Now, you know, all about the, you know, we have all these amendments, but from time to time, people like to bring out their tools and they like to chisel away at things that we've put in place to protect us from things that were unfair. Prior to Roe versus Wade, abortion had been illegal throughout much of the country. Since the late 19th century, Since the 1973 ruling, many states imposed restrictions on abortion rights. The Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade on June 24th. This is just a few weeks ago. It's not even a month hot. Holding that there was no longer a federal constitutional right to an abortion. Says who? The men and women that put on those robes And they sit behind a desk, hold a gavel, went to law school. They're called judges. But the real only judge is the one who gave us life. And I mean, I'm not talking about your mother, your father. The one who created human life as we know it. Now, I'm not here to go back and forth with you. I'm not here to go back and forth if there's a God, if there's no God, all that. Okay, save that. That's a whole nother podcast. And I'm more than willing to armor my words and suit up with a panel of people, not to go back and forth to debate, but to show our soundproof and doctrine, living proof that there is a God 
So let's move over here. Pay attention. The 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution ratified in 1868. That's before any of us was born. None of us on this planet right now was a born, was alive, born back in 1868. There is no human possible way. We are not living in the biblical times where you live long as Noah and Ruth and people of that nature. Granted, citizenship to all persons born or naturalized in the United States, including former enslaved people, our ancestors, African-American ancestors, and guaranteed all citizen equal protection of the law. Now, one of the three amendments passed during the Reconstruction era to abolish slavery and establish civil and legal rights for black Americans. I'm a black woman. It would become the basis for many landmark Supreme decisions over the years. Let's be clear. Let's be careful. And let's get educated. Some of the early regulations related to abortion were enacted in the 1820s and 1830s and dealt with the state and sale of dangerous drugs that women use to induce abortions. Despite these regulations and the fact being that the drugs sometimes prove fatal to women and they continue to be advertised and sold. Go figure. It's always been about that dirty green to the people who rule and run the world, who make decisions for you and me. Now, that's then and let's go now additionally some nativists alarmed by the country's growing population of immigrants were anti-abortion because they feared declining birth rates among white american born protestant women now i know you're into social media like i am you might be a little bit more deeper there are clips not doctored but sound clips where there was a state representative Mary Miller from Illinois who made her comment back during former President Trump's reign that she was so thankful and grateful for the victory of white America I said well hold hold on when I I had to watch that video over and over because I said did she say that on national TV Because back in that time, it seemed like people felt like, let me take off my mask. Let me tell you what I really feel and think. Let me go ahead and project ignorance and racism, murder on the, on the street. We were consumed by things that was happening where a lot of us couldn't believe our eyes or our ears, what we were seeing and hearing. So go there table that did you know that the first state to legalize abortion was Hawaii in 1970 and then New York legalized it to the point where you could come and be a resident you know you didn't have to be a resident you could come to New York you could be a resident if you wanted to but you didn't have to take a residency to have an abortion back then in 1970 now let's go here let's get in deep Let's talk about Roe. Do you know Roe versus Wade? What is that about? Who is Roe? Okay. History shows us in 1969, Norma McCorvey, also known as Jane Roe, okay, which was a Texan woman in her early 20s, sought after to terminate an unwanted pregnancy. Now, Roe, who had grown up in a poverty-stricken neighborhood, bad circumstances, previously had given birth twice. So she's had two children. She didn't abort those children. She gave them up for adoption. And as a result, some women resorted to illegal, dangerous, back-alley abortions or self-induced abortions. Y'all remember the movie Colored Girls? There was a scene, there is a part in there where the young girl got pregnant and she was too afraid to tell her mother, too ashamed, and she had an older sister who hung out in Newton Streets real well that had been down this road. Not because she chose to go down that road, because her mother 
made her go down that road. So much so that she made her older sister go and have one of those back alley, illegal, dangerous abortions. Yeah. So that was real talk. That's one of the things I love about Tyler Perry. He has a way of bringing reality and mixing it in. And showing us what we're really dealing with. Okay, let's move on. In 1950, well, I should say in the 50s and 60s, not just in the 50s, but the 50s and 60s, okay? The estimated number of illegal abortions in the United States alone ranged from 200,000 to 1.2 million per year. Now, that's not TTism, that's according to the Gut Matcher Institute. G-U-T-T-M-A-C-H-E-R. If you want to do your own research, please go and do so. And let me tell you about a little bit about who Henry Wade was. He was the attorney district attorney in Dallas who filed a lawsuit against Roe back in 1970. Okay. You may wonder who he is. Let me tell you a little bit, not a lot, because we're not here to glorify him. But in 1964, Wade was in the national spotlight when he prosecuted Jack Ruby, who killed Lee Harvey Oswell, who was the alleged assassin of President John F. Kennedy. Ain't it crazy how we still talking about this allegedly? Like, what? Okay, moving on. In 1970, a Texas district court ruled that the state's abortion ban was illegal because it violated a constitutional right to privacy. Pretty much how I'm feeling like all the whole COVID thing. Are you vaccinated? You know, you have to be vaccinated. What? I said, if you make that a state mandate, a a, a worldwide mandate where people have to, according to what you say, a job that could fire you tomorrow. Everybody has to be taking people from their homes. What? I said, if they're able to do that, they're going to keep on picking and pruning and prodding and unraveling until they destroy the world as we know it. They're already on a good start. Okay, they're already on a good start. Now, after after the you know Wade declared, he continued to prosecute doctors who performed abortions. Now, in 1973, the court declared that a woman's right to an abortion was implicit in the right to privacy protected by the 14th Amendment. But here we are, prod and picking, proging, digging trying to undo what many ancestors worked so hard to get done. And I wonder if you knew this part. The court divided pregnancies into three trimesters. And I'm perhaps, I'm wondering, now I'm not saying I know this part right here I'm saying, I'm wondering is that how we came up with three trimesters? But according to the court, they divided it. And declared that the choice to end a pregnancy in the first trimester was solely up to the woman. Okay. Y'all notice the first three months. In the second trimester, the government could regulate abortion. They had a little say so. That means that you are very well up to six months. Okay. Although not ban it. Okay. In order to protect the mother's health. And in the third trimester, between seven and nine months, the state could prohibit abortion to protect a fetus that could survive on its own outside the womb, except when a woman's health was in danger. Now, I will take a hard pause right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is deep. And I sit on the fence on this. And I'm going to tell you why I sit on the fence. I've been down this road in several different ways personally and the choice being made for you or not made for you health issues life or death situations these are parts that they're not thinking about this ain't a soapbox for me so I won't go into details and and switch gears but not only does this rattle my cage for several different personal reasons I know many a people who had issues happen to them that if they had to be subjected to what's going on right now it would have 
been terrible. They forget that there are women that have been raped. They forget that there are women that have been molested. They forget that there are women who have been impregnated by incest. They forget that there are women who could literally pass away because whatever is going on in their body, they cannot handle. They forget that a lot of people who don't want children, who birth control could have failed them, end up doing something way more worse. Bringing that child into the world, forcing them, and then watching them murder a baby or throw and disregard a baby by putting that baby in a trash bin throwing that baby in the water think about all of the senseless times we've heard about abandoned babies or babies discarded like trash these these women may have never wanted to have these children may have not made the best choices and I'm not saying that abortion is a form of birth control I am not by any means saying that what I am saying is that You have the right to pick and choose in a lot of instances. But do you have the right to pick and choose if you get raped? No, you don't. Do you have the right to pick and choose if you're molested? No, you don't. Do you have the right to pick and choose if you're going to be a victim of incest, which is molestation to the 10th power in my eyes? No, you don't. When we start to impede upon people's rights, picking and choosing what a man, woman, boy, or girl, or others should do with their bodies, with what should belong to them after they've been attacked or disrespected, raped, or whatever it looks like. Or made a very bad decision in an abusive relationship, whatever that looks like. And now you've, you know, you, you have, and I know you're going to say, oh my God, you have it where men who have been married have raped their wives. And you might say, how the heck can you rape your wife? A woman is supposed to be said, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of things that's going out there. Now, let me bring this to you. The fall of Roe versus Wade has increased interest in vasectomies. Right? And according to some urologists, that procedure should be considered permanent. It also would diminish sexual performance. That's what urologists say. Some. Because there's an interest in it. There are men that's like, yo... I don't want to be having to worry about no girl since she pregnant or unwanted pregnancy. So shoot. Huh. Okay. If y'all not going to let them get an abortion. Cause there's a lot of men that ain't had a lot of abortions, not them themselves. Of course, don't be a jack, butt. but men who have paid for abortions. Okay. Cause back in the day, let's be clear when we did this, the numbers with the data, 200,000 point two, 1.2 million women had illegal abortions. In the 50s and 60s, a lot of those women, and we're going to table this, were white women. And I love people, period. But that's what statistics told us. It was alarming to find out. I thought it was different. And that was because I was ignorant to the fact because I didn't have the data. But I always thought that pregnancy, (laughs) uh, the abortion rate was leaning more towards brown and black people than white that was my own ignorant thoughts but when I looked at the data they said 60% of women who have had abortions have been white women when I did a little bit more digging and research when representative Mary Miller from Illinois made her little snooty comment And then I had a video clip I shared yesterday during my uh, live stream 
um, uh, the young lady, uh, I, I believe her name is Ruth Carroll. I can't remember. So don't quote me on that. You have to go back and check out the, the uh, live stream, but she's an older white woman who loves to lay down facts. I love her because she really be putting it out there. Shit. Y'all don't want to know about or act like y'all don't see here. She'll bring it to the forefront. So you cannot act like you don't know. But when you think about it, they said they were sending those young girls away. Why you thought, oh yeah, Ella May or Mary Sue, Mary Jane, they went to go visit their grandparents for the summer. No, they was pregnant and they sent them away to go get an abortion. And they paid good money to a fine doctor that made a house call. And then there were midwives, African-American women, black women who learned how to do this, who gave a lot of white women abortions illegally back in the day. And you be quiet now and you don't say a word. If you don't believe me, do your own research. Now, the Cleveland Clinic told NBC News, go look it up for yourself if you don't believe me, that it received 90 vasectomy requests in the first few days after the Supreme Court ruling. They said typically they only get three or four a day. Can you believe 90? I said, what? And they said, <laughs> listen to this. I tell you, there's somebody watching everything we do. So y'all need to just know that. It said an online search for the term, where can I get a vasectomy has increased by more than 850%. What? In the lifetime special. And that data was collected by inner body research. Go look it up yourself again. Don't worry about TT. I'm not making it up. I don't need to. Research is out there. Read a book. Go online. Do some research. Check your resources. Okay. It's real in the field. And we're not really, really thinking about what we're doing. I feel like there's a bunch of people sitting around dictating for a hidden agenda making decisions that's going to affect us as a whole but not really as a whole because they have a hidden agenda L remember the ceo of pfizer said back in 2019 january 2019 there was a group of people who got together and realized that they were losing numbers in a horrifying ratio of white women having abortions and they said that they need to depopulize you know to kind of level the playing field if you would say by 2023 there's a video out there about it you ain't got to believe me it's not doctored it's real talk and he said and I'm happy to say that we're halfway there there's been 50,000 deaths unfortunately due to COVID since 2019 when he said that back in 2020 now mind you this man said in 2019 we sat in january and here we are he moved on to 2020 and they had already at that time had 50,000 deaths population control we have to be careful who we vote into these offices here's another piece i'm not gonna hold you any longer while everybody's mad at the leaders of the free world, allegedly, because this world ain't free, but you're mad at the Trumps and the Bidens and the Obamas, okay? Y'all be to worry about the people that are passing these laws because it ain't the president that's passing this law. It's the men and women you're voting for. Open up your eyes, open up your ears, get off your asses and help make a difference in the right way. Don't go by names only. Just, oh yeah, I'm familiar with that name. I'm going to vote for them. You better do your research. You will mess around and put Satan in office. But that's all I got for you on this Roe versus Wade. I gave you some data and some resources. You can check it out on your own. You can check me out every Wednesday right here. www.anchor.fm forward slash TT from the D. You can check me out on Spotify for Wind Down Wednesday. And if you feeling froggy, go ahead and leap onto a live stream and catch me for Tap In Tuesday over on my YouTube page or my social media platforms at 8 o'clock p.m. 
I'll see you soon.